Hello, hockey fans, and welcome back to another episode of Whatever Happened To, the series where we take a where are they now look at players who found success in the National Hockey League but are no longer permanent fixtures in the league, either due to controversy, poor play, or just rotten luck. In today's episode, we are going to be taking a look at a 10 year veteran of the league and a former Rookie of the Year, as we ask, whatever happened to Steve Mason? Selected 69th overall in the 2006 NHL Entry Draft by the Columbus Blue Jackets, Steve Mason spent his next two seasons in the Ontario Hockey League, split between the London Knights and the Kitchener Rangers, where he posted a 77 20 and 7 record in 104 regular season games, as well as a 14 and 7 record in 21 playoff games. Mason's 45 win season in 06 07 also earned him the reputation as the league's top netminder, since he won the award for the OHL's Goaltender of the Year. With his eligibility in the juniors coming to an end, and having dominated against his own age group, Mason was ready to take the next step in his career and try his hand in the National Hockey League. Thanks to his strong play in the coming year, the Canadian goaltender would make a great first impression in the best league in the world. The 08 09 season saw Mason join the Columbus Blue Jackets roster after a brief five game stint with their AHL affiliate, the Syracuse Crunch, and burst onto the scene as one of the best goaltenders in the entire National Hockey League, earning the role of starting netminder for Columbus and posting an impressive 33 20 and 7 record a 2.29 goals against average, and a .916 save percentage in 61 games. These numbers were so good, in fact, that Mason earned the Calder Memorial Trophy given to the league's Rookie of the Year, becoming one of only 16 goaltenders in NHL history to receive the award. Mason's outstanding season also helped the Blue Jackets clinch their first postseason berth in franchise history, but he went 0-4 in four playoff games as Columbus were swept in the first round by the Detroit Red Wings. Just three years after being drafted, Mason had produced a breakout season in the NHL and had been recognised as one of the best young players in the league. Though he would look to build on his initial success in the following years, the former third round pick wouldn't quite live up to his debut during his time as a Blue Jacket. The 09-10 season saw Mason take to the ice for Columbus once again and tend the crease as the team's undisputed starting netminder. Unfortunately, the Canadian goaltender took a real step backwards compared to his Calder winning rookie year, as he posted a 20, 26 and 9 record, a 3.05 goals against average, and a .901 save percentage in 58 games. This sophomore slump didn't help Columbus clinch a place in the postseason either, as the Blue Jackets missed out on the playoffs for the eighth time in nine seasons. With the second year of his three-year entry-level contract complete, and having proven himself to be a strong netminder at the NHL level, capable of winning at least 20 games a year, on September 20th, 2010, Columbus wasted no time in signing Mason to a two-year, $5.8 million contract extension worth an average annual value of $2.9 million a season. Despite a tough sophomore season, Mason had just signed his first multi-million dollar contract, and once his entry-level deal was complete, would be earning the type of salary a player of his numbers should. However, Mason would no longer be in Columbus by this contract's conclusion. 
The 10-11 season saw Mason rebound in the Blue Jackets' crease and post a modest improvement in his production during the final year of his rookie deal, as he posted a 24-21-7 record, a 3.03 goals against average, and a .901 save percentage in 54 games. Though he would become an above 500 netminder once again, these numbers wouldn't be enough to help Columbus clinch their second playoff appearance in franchise history, as the Blue Jackets missed out on the postseason for the second straight year. The 11-12 season saw Mason out to step his production up a notch once more, as his shiny new contract extension kicked in. However, the former third round pick would end up having his worst season to date, as he posted a 16 26 and 3 record, a 3.39 goals against average, and a 0.894 save percentage in a season limited to just 46 games for Mason due to injuries. To the surprise of no one, these numbers were unable to help Columbus book their place in the playoffs, as they missed out on the postseason yet again. Four years into his NHL career, Mason had been struggling to find the consistency in his game that had been present in years prior. Whilst his Calder winning rookie season, the year that put him on the NHL map, was drifting further and further into the past. The 24-year-old netminder just needed to get back to his numbers of years prior and find a way to re-establish himself as a top goalie in the league. But first, there was a lockout! During the 12-13 lockout, Mason decided that instead of heading overseas or suiting up in the minors, he would spend his time closer to home, making sure he was prepared both physically and mentally to get his career back on track when the lockout came to an end, as he didn't sign or suit up for another team during this period. Once the lockout ended and the NHL season finally got underway, Mason returned to the Blue Jackets roster. However, after winning just three of his first 13 starts of the year, on April 3rd, 2013, it was announced that Mason had been traded to the Philadelphia Flyers in exchange for Michael Layton and a 2016 third round pick. After half a decade with the franchise that drafted him, Mason was getting a fresh start in the city of brotherly love to try and get his career back on track. Shortly after being acquired by Philadelphia, the Flyers wished to extend Mason's stay with the team and give him a little bit longer to prove he could be their number one netminder. So, on April 8th, 2013, Philly signed Mason to a one-year contract extension worth $1.5 million. Mason then spent the rest of the season with the Flyers and made a strong first impression, as he posted a 4-2-0 record, a 1.9 goals against average, and a .944 save percentage in seven games. Despite his impressive debut in Pennsylvania, Philadelphia missed out on the postseason for the first time in seven years. Though he had left the only team he had ever known and had missed the playoffs with his new team, Mason wanted to show that Philly's decision to trade for him and their trust in him to be their starting netminder was well placed. Did he do so in the coming season? Oh boy, did he! The 13-14 season saw Mason suit up in his first full season with the Flyers and have one of, if not the best season of his entire NHL career, as he posted a 33-18-7 record, a 2.5 goals against average, and a .917 save percentage in 61 games, reaching the 30-win plateau for the second and final time in his career. Midway through this career year, Philly decided they liked what they had seen and wanted to keep the netminder around for several years to come. So, on January 19th, 2014, the Flyers signed Mason to a three-year, $12.3 million contract extension worth an average annual value of $4.1 million a season. This outstanding year also helped Philadelphia return to the playoffs, 
where Mason went 2-2 two and two in five playoff games, but the Flyers were eliminated in the first round by the New York Rangers. Thanks to his best season in six years, Mason had just signed the biggest contract of his career. Though he would, for the most part, produce decent numbers over the next few years, he would once again fail to live up to the season that got him this deal in the first place. The 14-15 season saw the freshly contracted Mason out to earn his new expensive paycheck as he took to the Flyers' crease once more. However, the Canadian goaltender struggled to match his strong play from the season prior, as he posted a disappointing 18-18-11 record, a 2.25 goals against average, and a .928 save percentage in 51 games. This underwhelming production, especially in the win column, didn't do much to help Philadelphia's playoff hopes either, as the Flyers missed out on the postseason for the second time in three years. The 15-16 season saw Mason bounce back from his tough last season and make a noticeable improvement in his numbers, as he posted a 23-19-10 record, a 2.51 goals against average, and a .918 save percentage in 54 games. This modest rebound helped Philadelphia return to the postseason, where Mason went 0-3 in three playoff games, but the Flyers were eliminated in the first round by the Washington Capitals. The 16-17 season saw Mason's production continue its gradual upward trend from the year prior, since the former third round pick wanted to prove he was still a number one goalie during the final year of his contract, as he posted a 26 21 and 8 record, a 2.66 goals against average, and a .908 save percentage in 58 games. Despite his continued improvement, the Flyers were unable to punch their ticket to the playoffs, as they missed out on the postseason for the third time in five years. Once his three year contract with Philly had expired, and having bounced back to his frequent 20 win form in the final two years of that three year deal, Mason decided to test the market as an unrestricted free agent. It didn't take long for the former third round pick to find a suitor in need of his services, as on July 1st, 2017, he signed a two-year, $8.2 million contract worth an average annual value of $4.1 million a season with the Winnipeg Jets. After parts of five seasons in the city of brotherly love, Mason was moving on to the first Canadian franchise of his career, in the hope of getting his play back to his 30-win standard of seasons past. However, this was the last contract Mason would sign in his NHL career, as his time in Winnipeg was shorter than he expected. The 17-18 season saw Mason suit up for Winnipeg for the first time and look to get his stint in Western Canada off to a good start. Unfortunately, the Canadian goaltender would end up doing quite the opposite, as his time with the Jets turned from promising to a disaster. The former third round pick posted a 5-6-1 record, a 3.24 goals against average, and a .906 save percentage in just 13 games, spent much of the year unable to play due to a number of different injuries, and even spent some time in the AHL for the first time in a decade with the Manitoba Moose, because he wasn't playing to the NHL standard that was expected. The Jets did make it to the playoffs though, where Mason suited up for one period of playoff hockey and stopped every shot he faced, but Winnipeg were eliminated in the conference finals by the Vegas Golden Knights. As his first season in Winnipeg came to a close, and having played the worst year of his entire career by far, the Jets weren't too keen on paying their struggling netminder $4 million of their cap hit for the upcoming season. So, on June 30th, 2018, it was announced that Winnipeg had traded Mason to the Montreal Canadiens, along with Yoel Armia, a 2019 7th round pick, and a 2020 4th round pick, in exchange for Simon Bork. 
only a calendar year after signing with Winnipeg, Mason had been shipped off to his third NHL team in just three seasons, but his stay with the Habs would be even shorter lived. Moments after being acquired by Montreal, the Canadians announced that they had placed Mason on waivers with the purpose of buying out the final year of his contract. When no team stepped forward to claim him, the move was made and Mason's contract was terminated. After 10 seasons in the best league in the world, this Canadian goaltender had just been made an unrestricted free agent involuntarily and was without an NHL team for the first time in his career. Following the buyout of his contract, Mason seemingly went radio silent for quite some time. No NHL team signed him either last season or for the current 1920 season, not even on a two-way deal or a minor league only contract, nor did Mason decide to move overseas and try his luck in Europe or beyond. I checked every few weeks for news for the past half a year to see if there was any news on what he was doing. But to no avail, Mason had completely fallen off the hockey map. That is, until recently, when I saw a few comments on my recent videos in this series suggesting where he might have gone. I did a bit of further digging into this and found an article written on the 9th of July 2019, where it was announced that Steve Mason had taken his talents behind the bench with the Oakville Rangers of the Ontario Minor Hockey Association, his former minor hockey team. To this day, Steve Mason serves as the Director of Goalie Development for the Oakville Rangers. When hired for the position, Mason mentioned how excited he was to teach young players about the goalie position, and also give back to the club that helped shape his early career as a hockey player, so it looks like things are going very well for him at the moment. At only 31 years of age, it's still entirely possible that Mason could work his way back into the pro goalie circuit and potentially make a return to the NHL. But with 10 years of experience in the bigs already at this point in his life, he doesn't have to if he feels like that chapter of his life is now complete. Sure, his final year in the league obviously wasn't great and he never won the Stanley Cup, but over his career, he was crowned Rookie of the Year, had six 20-win seasons, and two 30-win seasons, so he doesn't have anything left to prove. And besides, it seems like he's genuinely happy where he is right now, and helping to mentor and inspire the next generation of hockey players. So good on him, I wish him the best of luck. But regardless of what happens next for him, there is no doubt that Steve Mason had a pretty impressive NHL career. In 476 regular season games, Mason posted a 205, 183 and 64 record, a 2.7 career goals against average and a .911 career save percentage, as well as a 2-9 record in 13 playoff games. Add to that his aforementioned Calder Memorial Trophy, and you've got yourself a pretty impressive decade of hockey if you ask me. And there you go. That's what happened to Steve Mason. What do you guys think about Mason's career? Was it good? Bad? Or do you think he will make a return to the NHL in the coming seasons? I think it's certainly possible, but I guess we'll have to wait and see. Let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear what you guys think. But thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you have enjoyed. Please feel free to like, subscribe, share, or watch some of my other videos. Thank you very much for watching, and goodbye. A big thank you to Adam Budzizuski, Chris Gadsby, Connor B, Jordan Whitehead, and Paul Malia, as well as a huge thank you to Max Artis and The Legacy for helping support this video via Patreon. If you too want to help support the channel a little bit further, and get a shout out at the end of every future video, make sure you head over to patreon.com slash oddmanrush and become a patron today.